Okay, it's a focaccia time! Okay, but seriously, if you have never made bread before, I believe that this is the way to start. Focaccia is just so easy and there's not that much you can really mess up. And so you're gonna start with 830 grams of water heated to around 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're just going to dissolve seven grams of yeast into that water. And then once this is dissolved, you are going to add this into your flour mixture, which is, I forgot to film this, uh, 555 grams of bread flour and 415 grams of all-purpose flour. And now you're just gonna pour in your water. By the way, recipe will be, full recipe will be in the description below. Now you just want to get this all incorporated. I'm gonna start with my fork and then I'm most definitely gonna have to start using my hands. If you have a mixer, please go ahead and use it. It'll make your life 10,000 times easier. And you're going to mix this by hand for around 15 minutes. Yes, I know it's a lot of mixing, but it's 100% necessary if you really want to get a nice focaccia. Okay, after everything is well incorporated, you're going to add in 30 grams of olive oil. This will give it that focaccia texture that everybody loves. Olive oil is honestly the secret to a, to a good focaccia, so please try and buy the best quality olive oil that you can find. It'll make a huge difference in the end product. And yeah, we're just gonna continue mixing for quite a while. And then after your olive oil is nice and incorporated, you're going to add in 20 grams of salt. And just incorporate that. And all bread is different, so I think that in a little bit, I'm gonna have to add around 50 more grams of water. And that's what I love about bread. It's honestly just like playing around with stuff. There's no real recipe. Of course, there's like a baseline that you work off of. That's what this recipe is for. But yeah, all bread works and reacts different. So I'll meet you in case I have to add some more water. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna add just like, I put like half to a quarter cup in this, but I'm not gonna use it all. So I'm just gonna add, uh, I'd say a couple tablespoons of water into my dough. And then I think it should be perfect. Yeah, so now that we added in the olive oil, it's a lot less sticky. So yeah, the secret to focaccia is olive oil and a lot of mixing. So yeah, this will take a while. Okay, now that your focaccia dough is all mixed together, it's gonna be, it's really sticky and it's gonna stick everywhere. But now we need to cold ferment it. So the way you're gonna do that, get the biggest pan that will fit in your fridge or biggest container that will fit in your fridge. I'm using just a, re, uh, a single use one. I know it's not that great for the environment, but we don't have any big enough pans. One time I used a 9x13 baking dish and it completely overflowed. So yeah, and you just want to heavily grease it with olive oil. And don't be afraid to get in there with your hands with the oil because it is pretty necessary. Otherwise, you're going to have some, it's going to stick on the way out and nobody wants that. And don't remember to grease the lid too. If it sticks to the lid, that's also going to be very sad. Yeah, so 
Focaccia is literally just olive oil, a wet dough, uh, and cold ferment. And that's all there is to a focaccia, really. Okay, now that your uh, stuff is all greased up, you just want to transfer your dough into there. And once it is all transferred, just let rest in the fridge for 12, up to even 72 hours, so three days. And that is what will make it extremely bubbly, like all those Instagram posts of Bocaccia you see. I'm probably just gonna do this for around 24 hours. And yeah, I'll see you then. Okay, it is the next day and it is bake day. So just remove the lid from your focaccia. And in case you noticed, mine isn't uh, taking up the full pan. And the reason that is, is because I did a couple of folds throughout the process. I forgot to film it, but it, sounds pretty much exactly how it is you just uh like take it off the sides and then pick it up and do a little fold over not a slap and fold you don't want to be that aggressive with it and yeah so now we are going to transfer it to the dish that you're gonna bake it in this is a here let me check a 11 and a half by 18 and a half baking dish. Also just a basic uh, like cookie tray would probably work, but make sure that it's big enough for your focaccia. And now, before I forget, guess what we're gonna add? More olive oil, cause it's focaccia. Just drizzle heavily the bottom of your pan, cause basically, you are just frying the focaccia in olive oil as it bakes. Then spread that all around. I know it's a lot of olive oil. Nobody said this was low in calories. And then, I don't really care about this baking pan too much because it's single use. And just transfer it and try and like poke it out and bring it to the sides. If it's springing back like mine is currently, uh, just wait like 15 minutes. Just cover it and wait 15 minutes. You see how mine is like springing back. Yours will, there's a high possibility yours will do this too. So yeah, I'm just gonna wait 15 minutes before I continue pushing it out. Okay, so after you have, uh, what's it called? Placed it into your baking dish. If you just took this out of the fridge, you would cover it with another baking dish. And then, let me go get a towel real quick. Because this baking dish, you see how there's like little gaps at the end? Because it doesn't totally cover it. I'm just going to cover each side so that air can't get through and dry the focaccia out. And you just let it sit like this for two hours. Okay, while well, this is resting and relaxing, I'm gonna get my toppings ready, so I'm just gonna thinly slice like half of an onion. That's enough, you don't really need that much. And I have some rosemary, and then I don't have flaky salt, but if you do, Go ahead and use it. All I have are these uh, ice crystals from a grinder that I just took the lid off. So now, let's see if this will come to the edges better. Now I'm going to dimple it. Make sure that you're not going all the way through during this process. But yeah, you just wanna, this thing is shaking a lot. So you just wanna dimple it with your fingers. 
all over the dough. And then, guess what's next? More olive oil. Just drizzle. Now you want to do a lot less olive oil, but just drizzle a thin layer all over the top. And I'm going to top it with some salt. Don't do too much salt because there's salt inside of the dough. But this will give it a nice crunchy texture. And wherever the salt is, it'll taste so good. And kind of push your toppings into the dough. Because if they're just sticking out, they'll um, burn in the oven. Oh, and I forgot to mention, preheat your oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or the maximum temperature it would go, but I wouldn't go any higher than 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine can go 550 degrees Fahrenheit, I just don't like putting my oven that high. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of my onions. And you don't wanna overcrowd your focaccia with toppings. Okay, now what you wanna do is just place it in your oven uh, that is preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, or I actually don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit, but in Celsius, but it's probably a lot. And yeah, and just because focaccia is so thin, once it gets like a nice crispy uh, top and bottom, it should it it'll be ready on the inside. And that's the nice thing about focaccia; it's not that difficult to get wrong. It's not that difficult to get right, I mean. And it's pretty difficult to get it wrong. Finally, it's sandwich time, am I right? Doesn't this look beautiful? Let's get a look at that bottom. Woo. I think with me. Okay, sandwich time. Just cut this in half. I know the Italians are gonna be very angry at me for this. We're going to, our sauce will be a pesto mayo. That is one part pesto to two parts mayo. Just give that a mix. Now place that on the bottom and top pieces of bread. Then place on one uh, romaine lettuce thingy, break it in half, echoes on the bottom piece. Now, four thinly sliced tomatoes, uh, not four thinly sliced tomatoes, four thinly tomato sliced things. Oh, this is already pre-cut. Wow, Americans are so lazy, they buy mo fresh mozzarella pre-cut. Yeah, some fresh mozzarella. Some slices of salami. Two crispy pieces of prosciutto. Some pepperoncinis. Finally, one more romaine lettuce thingy. And top with their top piece of bread. There you have one of the greatest sandwiches to ever live on this earth.